Hey everybody, uh, we are going to be doing lab number five. This is our latitude and longitude lab today. Um, hopefully that you find this lab a bit easier since you have this video to go along with it. Uh, latitude and longitude can be a little bit tricky for some, um, but of course this lab should provide you with some experience as well as uh, just you know some practice generally with this. So again, this is gonna be lab number five. Um, you can put your name, today's date, whatever date you're doing this for. Instructor should be Corso, whatever period you are. Um, again, this is going to be lab number five for you guys, so you can put a five up in here, right? Um, the minutes is something that I record. That's not up to you, so you don't even have to worry about filling that in. So let's start with the introduction. It says the Earth is divided into grids of latitude and longitude. It says the Earth is spherical. The grid cannot have equal units around the planet. Now, very, very important. I often like or suggest in class, which you should be doing the same at home, for you to use some type of highlighter, if you would, or even, um, you know, some kind of, uh, you know, you know, just some way to underline the important parts of the introduction. So uh, let's highlight this. It says lines of latitude. Okay, let's see if I can make this a little bit thicker for you. So let's increase the width, make this a nice highlighter. But uh, lines of latitude indicate one's position north or south of the equator. They run east to west like rungs of a ladder. So... I always think of latitude as being flat, like lat is flat. Whereas lines of longitude, keep underlining or highlighting if you will, lines of longitude meet at both the north and south pole, both poles, and flare out around the equator. Okay, the astron astronomers of Royal Observatory established Greenwich, England as the prime meridian, which is zero degrees. Keep underlining or highlighting this sentence. The lines of longitude start at the prime meridian and they go 180 degrees east and 180 degrees west around the globe, right? Where they meet at the international date line. The international date line is at 180 degrees, the opposite side of the planet from the prime meridian. Time zones are areas around the planet where the time is standardized so that people living in that area would have a basic similarity in their time. Objective of this lab, you will learn how to determine positions of Earth using the coordinate systems of latitude and longitude. You will also investigate why time zones exist and variations in time. Now, I don't want you to be confused when you look at this, <coughs> this model of the Earth, excuse me. Okay, this model is actually showing you a, um, a vantage point, if you will, a um, perspective of the Earth as if you were above the North Pole. So imagine you're floating in outer space. This here, where all lines of longitude are coming together, that's your North Pole, okay? If you're looking at a side view of the Earth, right, if I kind of switch, let's see if I could switch this back to um, a different color here, make my width a bit smaller and draw you a little picture. But if you're looking at the side view of the Earth, right, the side view of the Earth is gonna look much, much different, okay? Side views of the Earth, if we drew our Earth like this, right, would have latitude splitting the Earth in half from north to south, and you would have lines of latitude again. They would look like this, like rungs of a ladder, if you will. They look parallel to one another, and they never intersect, okay? Uh, on a side view of the Earth, longitude, of course, is going to look different than, too, what you're seeing here, which is a top view. The lines of longitude would run north to south, and the lines of longitude would curve, if you will, uh, with the actual surface of the Earth. All lines of longitude actually come together at the north and the south pole. So a uh, very different perspective if you're doing the side view versus like the top view, okay? So anyhow, that being said, let's continue on. So let me just erase this and get rid of that and get rid of that. And uh, we'll keep going from here. So objective, you'll learn how to determine positions on Earth using the coordinate systems of latitude and longitude. In this lab, you will also investigate why time zones exist and variations in time. So the first question is really quite straightforward. In question number one, they say to you how many degrees are in a circle. And we should all know at this point that there's 360 degrees in any circle, right? A perfect circle, 360 degrees. How many hours there in the day? Well, we should know on Earth we get 24 hours in the day. And then it says how many degrees does the Earth rotate in one hour? Now, the Earth's rate of rotation is a very, very important math calculation in Earth science, right? And our rate of rotation is by taking that 360 degree rotation, okay, the, the Earth goal is 360 degrees, and it does that 360 degree rotation in 24 hours. 
Now, if you pick up your phone, right, you pause this video, you pick up your phone, and you do 360 degrees divided by 24 hours, right? You can pause this video now. Once you do that calculation, you should realize 360 degrees divided by 24 hours tells us that the Earth rotates on its axis at 15 degrees every hour. This is a really important, like I said, calculation when it comes to Earth science. And uh, it doesn't mean that the Earth is rotating at 15 degrees, uh, I'm sorry, 15 miles per hour or something like that. It just means that on its axis, if we look at this animation here, right, that the Earth is simply spinning at a speed of 15 degrees per hour. Again, not 15 miles per hour, 15 degrees per hour. And that rate of rotation, it goes again and again, repeatedly 15 degrees per hour until the Earth has come to one complete rotation in a day. Um, one thing that you need to also realize by looking at this animation right here is that the Earth is rotating counterclockwise. And because of that counterclockwise rotation, um, we get the sun and stars at nighttime, sun during the daytime, rising out of the east, moving across the sky at the speed at which Earth rotates, that 15 degrees per hour, and they set in the west. Okay, and that sets us up kind of nice for actually the next question. So if we go back to our lab, right, we just minimize this here, and actually we could exit out of that. But if we look at our lab, right, the next question says, how many degrees does the sun appear to travel in an hour? Well, the sun doesn't actually travel. And notice the word appear. Just like the stars at nighttime, the sun appears to move through the sky at the same rate that the Earth is rotating. Okay, it's the Earth's rotation which causes the sun to appear to move. Same thing with the uh, stars in the nighttime sky. Okay, so here we go. Here goes the procedure part of the actual lab. Number one, assuming it is noon at the prime meridian, write the times along the longitudinal lines in the world map. 11 o'clock a.m. and noon have been completed for you. Okay, so what they're asking you to do in procedure one is to go to your world map. And your world map is right here. And what they want you to do is they want you to put the times for each, okay, line of latitude down here in the slots. Now, one of the things that you were taught in the video yesterday, also in class for those of you guys who are in school, okay, you should know that every 15 degree jump, every 15 degrees of longitude, if you are heading towards the west, and in this case, the west would be that way, every 15 degree jump of longitude will subtract an hour of time off the clock, right? So if you see here, it says one o'clock p.m., noon, 11 o'clock a.m. What you're supposed to do at this point is keep for each line or if each 15 degree jump, subtract an hour. So again, right, if you look here, this is 11. This next one would be 10 o'clock a.m. So you wanna fill in 10 o'clock a.m. and the next one's gonna be nine o'clock a.m. 8 o'clock a.m., 7 o'clock a.m., this would be 6 o'clock a.m., 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 o'clock a.m. This is going to be 12, okay, midnight in here right over by 180. So again, it's going to be 12. It's hard to do it two sideways, but that's not 11. 12 o'clock, right? And then we got now 11 p.m., 10 p.m., 9 p.m., 8, 7 p.m., 6, 5, 4, 3, and 2. So guys, you really should be able to uh, put those all in before you get to the next part of your lab. If you don't put those in now, when you get to the next part of your lab, it's going to be very difficult, okay? So just please make sure you do that. Again, 10 a.m., 9, 8, Seven, six would be here. Five, four, three, two, one, twelve midnight, right at the 180 line here. And before midnight, it goes 11 p.m., 10 p.m., right? Nine, eight, seven. This would be six, five, four, three, and two. Okay, once you have those filled in, okay, you're going to go back to procedure 
two now because procedure one is done. So procedure one done, procedure two. Plot each city from the chart below on the world map on the next page. Use the letter here next to the city in front of each city's mark um, when you put the location on the world map. So here we have London, England, letter A. And our latitude is 51 degrees north and our longitude is zero. So what we're going to do is we're just gonna to go to our world map and we're going to plot using the coordinates of latitude and longitude. And notice when we look at our coordinates, latitude's always listed first. It either has a north or a south, look down the column, right? A north or a south, meaning you're either going up or down from the equator. And longitude is always listed as your second coordinate. And it either has a west or an east as its cardinal direction. So you're either gonna go west or east of the prime meridian for these guys. So let's start with 51 north, that means above the equator and a longitude right on the prime meridian. So here we go. We go to our world map, let's bring up my highlighter, let's make a nice little color here. We're gonna go with, uh, I like the color of blue. So we're gonna go blue. Now 51 north, ready? Here's 40, north is above the equator. So anything from here on up, is going to be north, right? Anything, actually let me get my marker in here, it's a little easier. Anything from here down is going to be south, right? So if I say 51, 50 is halfway, 51 is gonna be just a little bit more than halfway. So this would be 51 degrees north. Now, do you need to do this with every coordinate that you're gonna to do today and draw a line? No, your map will come out looking like, a, like madness. But 51 degrees north would be there. And zero degrees for the prime meridian is here, right? It's just a zero right there. What we're gonna do is where the two intersect, 51 north and zero, is you're gonna make a dot, okay? And you're gonna label that dot letter A, okay? That is now done. So we go back. I like to like kind of make a little check mark to make sure that I've done. And the way that they got noon was they just ran to the bottom of like where A is. And if you run to the bottom of way as A was plotted all the way down, it tells you that that time zone had a time of noon. So you just wrote noon. Now remember, you're supposed to put all the times here and here first. I don't have them filled in, but you're supposed to do that. Okay, if you don't know how, what times to put in here, you gotta back up on this video a bit. Okay, so then the next one. Next one says go to 64 degrees north and 21 degrees west. So again, we're gonna come down here. Okay, again, it says 64 four north, 21 west. So if I go to 64 north, this is north above the equator, 64 would probably be like, this is 70. So 64 might be like, basically like right underneath this dashed line. And the other coordinate was 21 west. Now look, this is zero. These say western. There's a couple of east between zero and 20 this way, the rest of the eastern are gonna fall on the map over here. So again, they're saying go to 64 north, and 21 west, so 64 again below that dash line, and 21 west is literally gonna be just on the other side of this, this marker that says 20. So 64 and 21, legit, like right about there. When I put that dot in there, I'm gonna put the letter B since that's what the listing was next to it, and what I wanna do from B is I wanna go straight down, right? If I go straight down to the bottom, you're gonna get a time, and that time for that one, if you wrote it in as you were supposed to do in this slot in here at the bottom, right, is supposed to be 10 a.m. So you're gonna go back and you're gonna record that, okay? And this is gonna be 10 a.m., okay? So you put 10 o'clock in there, right? And don't forget your a.m. All right, so what your responsibility at this point is, is to do is basically plot the rest of these points. I will do one more with you. I'm gonna do Rio uh, de Janeiro, Brazil. And then once you're done with that one, well, I'm done with that one, you might wanna pause this video and continue plotting. Don't forget to put the letter and of course the time using your grid. So again, 22 degrees south and 43 degrees west. So I'm gonna go back, oh, sorry, wrong direction. 22 degrees south. Now south is below the equator. And remember latitude is the flat, it's first. So 23 degrees south, or I'm sorry, 22 degrees south, okay, it's gonna be just about here somewhere like right above this dashed line, right? Just above it. And then my other coordinate, my up and down coordinate said 43 degrees west. Now if I look, western hemispheres are mostly found right in here between zero and 180, right? 
and we want 43 west. So this is 40, 43 is just gonna be on the other side of 40 to the left of it. Okay, the numbers increase for the western longitudes as you go to the left, and they intersect right about there. So where these two intersect, you're gonna put a dot, you're gonna label it letter C, and you're gonna go straight down to the bottom again, once again to get your time, which I had written down as nine o'clock on my answer key. Okay, now again, you're supposed to plot everything from here on out. So when you go back to your data, you're gonna do from letter D all the way down to letter J. What I would do right now is I was pause, pause this video, I would continue to do all your plotted points and make sure you fill in the whole part of this chart. Okay, so pause your video here. When you come back, we'll pick up with your observation questions. So hopefully you did your plotted in your graph and we're gonna go for your observation questions at this point. So observation questions, what direction does the sun rise in? You guys, every day the sun is going to rise in the east. Okay, so let me just get my marker back up here and my width is good, good size. So, okay, so sun rises in the east each day. Which city would see, uh, would first, I'm sorry, which city would see the sunrise first, an eastern city or a western city? Guys, you should know that our location in the world is the east coast of the United States, and we see the sunrise many hours, probably about three to four hours, depending on daylight savings, before California. So the eastern city will always see the sunrise before the western city, so eastern, okay? Question number three, how many degrees wide are each time zone? Guys, time zones are based on the Earth's rate of rotation, so time zones are 15 degrees apart from one another. Remember, Earth's rate of rotation, same thing, 15 degrees per hour. What time zone do you live in? Guys, in the eastern part of the United States, we live in the eastern time zone, and the second part of this lab will actually help you understand that. Which city is going to see noon first, Rio or New York? Well, who's further to the east? That's the question. Who has a more eastern longitude? So I don't even know this unless I look at my data. So we're comparing who's further to the east, okay? So who has a lesser number for their longitude or closer to the east? So we're gonna compare 43 degrees west to uh, 74 degrees west. You could even look at your map up here, I'm sorry, your map down here where you plotted Rio versus New York. I mean, New York was plotted, um, you plotted New York afterwards, but 74 degrees west versus 43 degrees west. If I look, 74 degrees west would be like somewhere in here versus 43 degrees west was in here. So who's further towards the east? Most certainly the one with the longitude of 43. And again, 43 was Rio. So I'm gonna say Rio is more likely to see the sunrise, or not more likely, will certainly see the sunrise before New York. So Rio de Janeiro. So yeah. Question number six, Rio de Janeiro and New York City are both 30 degrees longitude apart. How many hours does this represent in time? Well guys, the rule is 15 degrees will equal one hour. So um, you could do the math. It's a very easy proportionate question. 30 degrees would equal how many hours? Okay, and that's what your answer is going to be for that one. Okay, so this uh, first procedure of the lab is now complete. Actually, I shouldn't say that. The first procedure is complete. So it's the second procedure. And then complete the time column on the cities in the world chart. We should have filled that in. Kind of, I said to do that as you did too. So procedure B is now done which bring, brings us to procedure C. Locate the cities on the map below. Uh, record the city's time zones in the space provided. So New York City is at 40 degrees, 43 minutes, and 74 west. Okay, so New York is actually located right here where it says New York, right there. And it says, what time zone is New York in? And New York is the easternmost time zone because it's on the east coast. So what are you supposed to record? Well, up in the box here, just you're supposed to just record that it's in the eastern time zone. Okay, next question. What time zone is Dallas, Texas in? Well, they have Dallas marked in here. We really didn't need to look at the latitude and longitude. And uh, all you need to know is that Dallas, if you look straight up, it's part of this white area in here, which is part of your central time zone. So you only have to write in central. Okay, next question, uh, Denver, Colorado. 
Denver, Colorado is in this shaded area in here, which is part of your mountain time zone. So again, you want to write mountain in here. And then your last time zone for the United States is what's found furthest to the west. And that would be all this white area in here, which includes San Francisco, which is your Pacific time zone. So you have four time zones which really take up the United States. Pacific is most Western, Eastern is most Eastern, and then between them where you have the Rocky Mountains is your mountain time zone. And then of course the middle of the United States is your central time zone. Okay, so which is the northernmost city out of the four listed? Remember north is up and south is down. You wanna figure out who's furthest north. You could also look at the coordinates, who's the highest number away from the equator. And that most certainly is gonna be New York. So New York. Question number two, approximately how far apart are the four cities by longitude? Well, when I did this, I kind of looked at the second number, which is your longitude number. And the furthest city to the east is New York, 74 degrees. And the furthest city to the west was California at 122 degrees. So they're really asking you how many degrees apart are the four cities. And you could do 1, 22, right, which is California's longitude, and you're going to subtract from it the longitude of New York, which we said was about 74. So if you guys do your quick math calculations, right, you can't take four from two, you can always borrow, or if you just want to pick up your calculator and you just want to punch the numbers in, 122 minus 74 gives you a difference of about 48 degrees. So again, the difference between the two longitudes of the two cities is approximately 48 degrees. Okay, your next question. It says the Texas Rangers are playing in San Francisco, California, or I'm sorry, playing the San Francisco Giants in California with a starting time of 8 o'clock. What time would residents in Dallas expect to see the game on their televisions? Well, they're saying the Texas Rangers are playing so that these guys in Texas down here are playing the guys over here in California with a starting time of eight o'clock, right? So um, they're playing in California, okay? Their starting time is eight o'clock here, right? And they wanna know if you live here in Dallas, what time should you turn on your television? So hold on, let me erase some of this madness here so we can just get a clear picture of what's going on. So get rid of all that, come on, we could do it. And Hang on one second. So if we have, just get rid of that and that and that. If we know that they're starting in California, their big football game at eight o'clock, right? And you have people over in Dallas, Texas, expecting to watch the game on their television. Remember every 15 degrees that you jump, okay, to the uh, east, I'm sorry, to the west, you subtract an hour. If you're going from this west towards the east, you would add an hour. So again, if you're trying to figure out what time they have to turn on their televisions here um, to see the game that's actually starting at eight o'clock there, okay, we're jumping over two time zones here. We're going one, two, and again, every time you go to the east, you are going to add your time. So they're gonna be watching the game pretty late, okay? So they are going to, just make sure the Texas Rangers are playing in the playing San Francisco Giants in California. Yeah, they're gonna be tuning in two hours. It's two time zones later. They're gonna be tuning into their game somewhere around 10 o'clock p.m., which is actually quite late to be watching a game. If the game's on at 10 o'clock, you should probably just record it and watch it the next day, unless it's a weekend. Then you can stay up late. Okay, so 10 o'clock p.m. All right, so that concludes your second half here of the lab. So all this should be done, this should be done, that is done. That brings us to our last and final procedure, which is procedure, okay, D. By far and wide, procedure D is probably the most challenging. So right now, if you're getting kind of burnt out, what I would do is I would pause this video because it's already been quite some time. I would pause the video, maybe take a break, go take, you know, get a glass of water or a snack, maybe come back to this tomorrow because you do have a couple of days before I have wanting, you know, before you need to hand it in. And again, I would take a little break at this point, maybe pause the video and come back later on. 
So I am going to continue this video. Hopefully, if you paused it, you're back now. Even if you didn't pause it, you pause it. You're just like an animal. You just want to get this all done, which is crazy. You're like a workhorse. So let's get rid of some of this writing, and we're going to continue on. So let me just erase, clear this up for you guys a little. All right. So we are going to go to our final part of this lab, which is, again, a, probably the most challenging part of this lab. And this shows you an actual page from the Earth Science Reference Tables called the Generalized Bedrock of Geology of New York State Map. And what you guys are looking at is all different lines or all different cities in different parts of New York State. But what you should see is numbers all around this map. And this actually was taught to you in your lesson online yesterday or in class, depending where you were. Now, I got to explain this to you because otherwise it may not make sense. So do you see the 41 over here? That actually connects to the 41 over here. That is a line of latitude. And if you go north, you're going to see the lines of latitude increase. So over here, you got 42 degrees, which connects all the way across this 42. This is 43 to 43. Okay, this is 44 to 44, and this is your last line of longitude in New York State, which is 45. And New York State is north of the equator, so these are all north. Then what you got are lines of longitude. So let's switch the color up for longitude and make it pink. You ready? So you got lines of longitude. Now, 72 here runs to, I mean, they don't have it up here because this is no longer New York State, but there should be another 72 here. And you get 73, runs to this 73 down here. We got, oops, 73.30, we're not going to get into just yet, but 74 runs to 74. That's a terribly drawn line. You get the picture, though. This 75 goes to this 75. This 76 goes to this 76, and so on, right? 77 goes to this 77. Oh, my gosh, that was, like, worse than the last one. Let's, let's, let's fix that one. So 76, I'll go back to the pen. Oh, no, let's go back to highlighter. Okay, 76, let's go to 76, 77, straight up to 77, 78, 79, and so on. So these pink lines are your lines of longitude. The blue lines are your lines of latitude. Now, if you have a good eye and you've been looking at this map, right, and if you paid attention to your lesson yesterday, one of the things that you realize is that there's these things called minutes with each line of latitude and longitude. So let me explain this to you. When we look at the lines of latitude, which are the flat lines, right? And let's go back to the color blue so I don't confuse anybody, right? We'll go to aqua here. 42 is just one line of latitude. And then you get 43 is another degree or line of latitude. Except if you were to drive your car between these two, there's legit like 60 miles worth of like land between here and there. It would take you like an hour driving at 60 miles per hour. And scientists were like, wow, that's a lot of distance to be covered by only one degree. So what they said is let's do like kind of like what the clock does. Instead of just saying that there's one hour, let's divide the clock into minutes. And there's 60 minutes between each hour. And what they did is they actually put 60 little lines or degrees, if you will, 60 minutes in between each major degree. So you think of this as like 42 in one minute, two minutes, three minutes, four minutes, five minutes, six minutes, until you get halfway. And this line right here that you see is actually 42 degrees and 30 minutes. It's halfway through, think of it like an hour from here to here. So if you get three quarters of the way through, this is still 42 degrees, but it would be 45 minutes. And then we write minutes with like that little, like almost like apostrophe mark. So basically you don't flip up to the next hour until you get to your 59th minute. So right below 43, you would expect this to be 42 degrees still and 59 minutes. Once you get to that 50, you go past 59, it kicks you up to 60 minutes, which now turns you to the next degree. On a clock, it would be the next hour. So understand that lines of latitude and longitude have these little minutes between them. For example, like I said, here's your 74 and your 75 
degree of longitude, halfway between them right here would be 74 degrees and 30 minutes of longitude. And again, that gives us more specific, more accurate way of reading maps. If you were lost in the middle of forest, it would be able to make people uh, actually get to you versus uh, you still being lost in the middle there of the forest with nobody actually able to pinpoint where you're at. That's why we do these little degrees with minutes. Now, first question says, locate the following cities for the coordinates listed. Now, lat is flat. It's always listed first. So the first coordinate they give you is 43 degrees, 15 minutes. So I'm going to go to 43. And I remember that halfway through an hour is 30 minutes. So this would be 43 degrees and 30 minutes. So 15 is going to be kind of like halfway between 43 and 0 minutes and 43 and 30. So 15 would be somewhere in here, right? So 43, 15. And then the other coordinate they ask for is 77 and 30. Now here's 77. This is your line of longitude. Here's 78. 77, 30 would be halfway between. So 77, 30, 77 degrees and 30 minutes. So where the two crisscross, the nearest city is Rochester. So you're going to fill that in. Rochester. Oops, sorry about that. Rochester. Okay, that's your first answer. Okay, so that brings us to the next question. And the next question is related to, uh, again, finding coordinates with degrees and minutes. So let's see if I can get a better color than gray for this one. Gray is a little hard to see. So let's go, um, we'll switch it to, how about, why not purple? So here we go. Next question, go to 44 degrees and 58 minutes. Now, if you're 58 minutes into an hour, you're just about to the next hour. So I'm just about to 45 degrees. And then it says 74 and 58, which means I'm almost to 75 degrees. So I'm going to be just under 45 and just to the right of 75. Okay, so 44, 58. Okay, so here's 44 all the way up here. 44, 58. Okay, here's going to be 45. So 44, 58 is going to be like right under 45. And 74, 58 is going to be right to the right of 75. So these two crisscross right at Messena. So your next answer is Messena. You want to fill it right in. Okay, M A S S E N A, and you're good. Okay, last uh, coordinate for this uh, first procedure here 42 degrees and no minutes, 79 degrees and no minutes. So it's 42 degrees north and 79 degrees west. So let's just get rid of some of this, right? Sorry about that. Get rid of some of this writing here. Okay, let's get rid of this mess down there. And we're going to go 4279. So I'll get my marker back up. So 42, exactly 42 is going to be here. And 79, exactly 79 is going to be there. They crisscross right at Jamestown. So again, the last answer, fill it in, Jamestown, right there. Okay, so that brings us to the very last procedure part of this and then our discussion questions. Find the coordinates for the following cities, Riverhead, Watertown, and Niagara Falls. So we're going to go to Riverhead first. Now remember, latitude is the flat line. It is listed first. So if I go to Riverhead, let's get back on my pen. Riverhead, which is right here, and I draw a flat line, I'm pretty much exactly at 41 degrees and 00, zero minutes north. So I'll write it again down here, 44 I'm sorry, 41 degrees, zero, zero minutes north. Now that's your latitude. You still have to get your longitude. And your longitude is going to be your up and down line. Again, longitude is up and down. It measures west and east of the prime meridian. So let's just get rid of this mess in here. And let's go longitude. So longitude, here we go, of Riverhead. Riverhead's right there. I'm going to draw a line up and down. Now here's 72, here's 73. I'm right between the two. I'm not 73 yet. So I'm still gonna write 72 degrees and I'm halfway. So how many minutes are halfway through a full hour? 30 minutes. So 72 degrees, 30 minutes. And Long Island, New York, all of New York is west of the prime meridian. So I'm gonna go down here. I'm gonna fill it in 72 degrees. 
and 30 minutes west. Got two to go, Watertown and Niagara Falls. So let's find Watertown. Here's Watertown. If I draw a flat line right through Watertown, it's pretty much almost 44. It's just under 44. So I'm going to go with 43 degrees and maybe 58 minutes north. And for Watertown's longitude, if I draw a straight line up, I would settle for 76 degrees, zero, zero minutes west. Okay, so those are your coordinates. This one's first, your latitude, then your longitude. Again, write those coordinates down in your blank down below. And that leaves us with Niagara Falls. So let's do Niagara Falls last. Let's just erase some of this writing on here so it's not as messy. So Niagara Falls, your final one. Niagara Falls is all the way up here between Lake Ontario and Lake Erie. So Niagara Falls, let's get this going. So Niagara Falls. Niagara Falls is here. This is 43. This is 43, 44. It's a little above 43. I'm going to go 43 degrees and maybe like five minutes north of the equator. And then my longitude for Niagara Falls, again, you know, if you look, let me just erase this so you can see the exact dot, but your longitude for Niagara Falls, see right here is your exact dot. If I draw an up and down line, I'm going to say that's pretty much right on 79 degrees and we'll put zero, zero minutes and that's west. Okay, so that's your latitude that gets listed first. That's your longitude, it gets listed second, and that goes in your final line down here for Niagara Falls. So your discussion questions. What is the latitude of the North Pole? We should know that the North Pole is at the very top of the Earth, okay, it's here. It makes a right angle from the equator, and if you make a right angle straight up to the North Pole, that is a 90 degree angle, so it's 90 degrees north. What's the latitude of the equator? We just got done saying it's zero. What is the approximate latitude of Long Island? So we just need the latitude of Long Island, which is the flat line that runs through. And it's pretty much 41 degrees, okay, north. So let's go back here. Okay, latitude of Long Island is 41 degrees north. If you measure the angle, this is say angle, not angel. Measure the angle of Polaris in your backyard. What would be the altitude of Polaris? Um, guys, one of the things you always have to remember is whatever your latitude is, Polaris is going to be that altitude in the nighttime sky for you. So if you're standing outside, okay, and straight up from your head is 90 degrees, straight out to the horizon is zero degrees, okay, you're going to have some angles. And if you, as long as you're looking towards the north, if you're on Long Island and your latitude is 41 degrees, Polaris's height in the sky is going to be at 41 degrees. So Polaris's altitude always matches your latitude. So that's going to be 41 degrees up. And you always find Polaris in the northern part of the sky, right? Polaris is not seen in the southern part. It's not seen in the southern hemisphere either. When you use Polaris to, uh, whenever you use Polaris to guide a person's latitude, why would you always end up in the north? Again, if you're on Earth, which we all are, uh, you should know that Polaris is only seen uh, if you live in the from the equator up towards the North Pole, which is your northern hemisphere. Okay, you cannot see Polaris in the southern hemisphere, nor could you see it in the southern part of the sky. So again, whenever you use Polaris to guide a person's latitude, why do you always end up north? Because Polaris is only seen in the northern part of the sky. Okay, and it's only seen in the northern hemisphere. Why don't line, latitude lines ever touch? Guys, lines of latitude never ever touch because they are parallel. So if we drew the earth and we draw, a line, draw lines of latitude, we notice that these lines of latitude never intersect. They are parallels. Whereas lines of longitude just do the opposite. They all actually curve with the surface of the earth. This is a terrible drawing, but you get the point. Okay, lines of longitude all curve. They all meet at the North Pole and the South Pole. Lines of latitude never, ever curve. They just wrap themselves straight around the Earth, and they never intersect. So again, lines of latitude are parallel. Well, guys, that is it for tonight. That's all I should say tonight. You're probably watching this during the day. Uh, that should clear everything up with this lab. 
And hopefully uh, if this wasn't too long. Hopefully if it was, you paused it in between and it gave you a little bit of a break. All right, so hopefully this helps and uh, definitely submit this as soon as you're finished. Take it easy.